Minimalism is the style of piano playing that you might associate with composers like Ludovico Einaudi, Max Richter and Philip Glass and it's really worth trying out, especially if you're pretty new to piano or keyboard and your skills are still relatively basic, because you can achieve a lot with minimalism very quickly. Minimalism looks for depth in simplicity and if you understand a few basic principles about how it works you can come up with your own really cool piano songs and improvisations with very little knowledge of music theory or harmony. Best of all, playing around with minimalism can teach you a ton about how chords and harmony and melody work and there's also one very special way you can use minimalism to make yourself a much better piano player. Stick around and we'll find out what it is. The whole guiding principle of minimalism is less is more. In the past on my YouTube channel I've talked about how you can do a lot with a little on the piano and minimalism is kind of the extreme example of that. Let's take a quick look at the thing that I was playing a moment ago. We're in the key of F major and in a fairly slow 4-4 four, four time, that's 4 beats per bar, 4 beats per measure. And in the right hand I'm doing this incredibly simple thing, arpeggiating an F major chord breaking it up into its constituent notes and playing them from top to bottom over and over. I started on the A, which gives me the C, the top note of the chord, right at the start of each new beat, which kind of creates that kind of insistent singing effect that the right hand has. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, that's a really good example of how a small, subtle decision can have a big effect when you're making minimalist music. In the left hand there's a really simple 4 bar chord progression. We start off with a bar of F in this position, that's what we would call its second inversion, so we've got the note C at the bottom. Then we have a bar of F augmented, which is just one note different, the C goes to a C sharp. We could call that chord C sharp augmented if we want to, naming augmented chords is kind of complicated sometimes, but we'll just call it F augmented for now. Then we have a bar of D minor, which if you know a little bit of music theory you'll know is the number two chord in the key of F major. Then we have a bar of G minor in its first inversion, okay, with B flat as the lowest note. So F, F augmented, D minor, G minor. Notice how everything is very simple and there's not much movement. There are lots of shared notes between those chords. In a few minutes I'll show you how to start doing this with your own chord progressions. But if you like, start off by playing around with this one. Maybe just try copying exactly what I'm doing. It might take you a little bit of practice to get going, but once you get comfortable, I want you to notice how you can really dig into this. This is the thing about minimalism, it allows you to be really expressive. I've taken the virtual keyboard off the top of the screen because I want you to focus not so much on which notes I'm playing as on how my hands are moving. I'm taking a lot of care to play expressively. Sometimes when you really get into the groove of a minimalist piece on the piano, it can be almost like dancing on the keyboard. A couple of quick technical things that are going to really help you here. First of all, I'm using a little bit of the sustain pedal, the right hand pedal on the piano. Now experiment with that for yourself, but usually you're going to find that if you re-pedal between each chord, that's going to give you a good, smooth, atmospheric sound without things getting too muddy and messed up, like this. Okay. Secondly, don't worry about clashes. You might think that it's somehow wrong to play one chord shape in the right and a different chord shape in the left, but absolutely not. Very often those little clashes actually create musical interest. So think about when we have our F chord in the right and our F augmented shape in the left. That crunch between the C sharp and the C natural is kind of a contrast with the easygoing harmony that surrounds it and it gives the whole thing a little bit of tension that powers the progression along. 
That kind of thing also helps you to create more interesting chords without very much effort, literally doing more by doing less. So that G minor shape in the left plus the F shape in the right adds up to a whole new chord. You could call it a voicing of B flat major 13 or maybe a B flat 6 9. Whatever you call it, it might never occur to you to use that chord in a simple progression like this, but it sounds really cool. Now the thing about piano minimalism is that it's not completely static. Yeah, If you listen to minimalist composers, they do introduce change into their pieces. How much they do it varies, so like Philip Glass, who is very influenced by classical music, tends to be very, very restrained and subtle and even austere, whereas Einaudi, who is more influenced by pop music, tends to change things up a bit more. The question, of course, is how do you do it? Once you've got something minimalist going, how do you introduce a little bit of change? Well, the thing is to keep it simple and subtle. Remember, less is more. One thing that often works well is to slightly vary whatever pattern it is that you're using. Listen to this, for example. That right hand pattern has changed a little bit. It's got just a little bit more elaborate than the basic F major broken chord. I've added a tiny complexity, but it changes and develops the character of the whole piece. If I played the very simple version, followed by that slightly more elaborate version, it would feel like a development. We'll think some more about how you can create your own minimalist compositions in a moment, but basically you can create whole pieces, quite long things, just by stacking little changes like that one on top of another, and maybe pulling back at times to the first and simplest idea, just creating some sort of very subtle development. I just want to briefly mention my books and my piano packs, products that I've been offering for a while now and which have helped thousands of people improve their piano skills. I'm not going to go on and on about them here because we're busy learning the piano, but if you look in the description text below this video and in the YouTube cards at the top right of the screen, you'll find links to my ebook bundle deal and to my incredibly popular piano packs, so please do check them out. They're not at all expensive yet, I sell loads of them and I get fantastic feedback, so I bet that you will like them as well. Do check them out once you finish watching. Now at the start of the tutorial, I mentioned the incredible magic skill that piano minimalism can help you with. So what is it? Well, basically, it can help you overcome a big problem that a lot of piano learners face. The best piano players play with a lot of expression and grace and emotion, but when you're starting out, it's super easy to get locked into a very mechanical approach to playing. Play this, then this, then this, then this, this note, that note, followed by the other note, and you kind of lose track of the actual sound that you're making. Now, because minimalism places restrictions on the notes that you're playing, in other words, there aren't as many mistakes that you can make, it frees up brain space to allow you to focus on your expression and to let you put a little bit of soul into your playing much more easily. Okay, so finally, how do you do this for yourself? How do you create your own minimalist piano pieces? Well, you can start as simple as you like, maybe even with just two notes, playing around with rhythms and stress patterns. You can learn an awful lot about the style just from starting off like that. And if you want to do something like I've done here today, all you need to do is find a really short chord progression, like four bars long, eight bars long, absolute maximum. Yeah, you can lift it from your favourite song if you want to, and try playing those chords in some kind of repetitive pattern. That might be in the right hand, which obviously is what I've been doing today, or it might be in the left hand. Yeah, so for example, in the left hand, an Alberti bass pattern is a really handy thing.
the important thing is maintaining some sort of thread of repetition, maybe holding on to one chord in one hand and changing chords in the other hand, or even just sticking to one note in one hand, like I was doing just then. The important thing is to experiment, keep it simple, and focus on the expression. If you come up with something cool, feel free to send it to me or post it on YouTube or social media or wherever and tag me. All of my social media links are in the description text down below. I'll be really glad to hear it and maybe give you some feedback if you'd like some.